for my extra credit video, I will be discussing the process of calorimetry. Calorimetry is the process of measuring the amount of heat released or absorbed during a chemical reaction. By knowing the change in heat, it can be determined whether or not a reaction is A, exothermic or releasing heat, or B, endothermic and absorbing heat. And we can also calculate how much energy is absorbed or released. In the experiment used in lab, an insulated container is used to create an isolated environment so that the heat transfer from the system can accurately be measured with a temperature probe. Calorimetry is used to measure changes in temperature from the energy produced by a reaction. More specifically, calorimetry can be used to determine the number of calories per gram of food and to determine the amount of energy released through the burning food via food calorimetry. This method involves the measuring of the change in temperature of a sample of water from the combustion of a small amount of food. Combustion is the process by which a material is transformed, resulting in the result of heat. The components of food, like proteins, carbohydrates, or fats, can be combusted to determine the amount of energy stored within. Energy from food is acquired by the body after food is digested and absorbed. To obtain this value experimentally, a calorimeter is needed. The basic principle of the calorimeter is to use the energy released by the selected food during combustion to heat water. Fundamentally, the energy released as heat by the food is completely absorbed by the water. A calorimeter is an insulated container that is used to measure heat changes. The majority of reactions that can be analyzed in a calorimetry experiment are either liquids or aqueous solutions. A frequently used calorimeter is a set of two foam cups fitted with a lid to limit the heat exchange between the liquid in the cup and the air in their surroundings. In a typical experiment, specific volumes of the reactants are put into separate containers and the temperature of each is measured. They are then mixed into the calorimeter and the reaction starts. The reactant mixture is stirred until the reaction is complete, while the temperature of the reaction is monitored throughout. By monitoring the temperature, we can tell if a reaction is endothermic because the temperature drops and heat is being absorbed, or if the reaction is exothermic and the temperature increases because heat is being released. The temperature change of the water is measured in the experiment and the specific heat of water can be used to calculate the heat absorbed by the surroundings. To calculate the heat absorbed, we can use the equation Q equals mc delta T, where Q is heat in joules, M is mass of water in grams, and delta T is a change in temperature in degrees Celsius. The heat absorbed by the surroundings is equal but opposite in sign to the heat released by the system. Because the heat change is determined at constant pressure, the heat released by the system is equal to the enthalpy change. The key to all calorimetry experience is the assumption that the, there is no heat exchange between the insulated calorimeter and the room. The temperature change that is measured is the temperature change that is occurring in the surroundings. To ensure an efficient and accurate calorimeter experiment, it is important to make sure that no heat escapes from the reaction. This means no opening the lid and properly using two styrofoam cups. Two cups are required because it ensures that no energy is lost because in order to use a calorimeter, we must assume that no heat is lost in the environment. We use styrofoam because it is insulated and we need to use an insulated container to create an isolated environment so that the heat transfer from the system can be measured correctly. So my one tip is that at all costs, do not put your calorimeter setup at risk of losing any heat to the outside environment because that could mess up the whole experiment.